What's up, everybody? Uh, today I'm going to go through a quick code that will basically, uh, it's just setting up a loop structure that will allow you to pull in multiple files. And then uh, I'll show you where in this file you could uh, go through and run some analyses. But I'm not going to go through any specific analyses. Really, the purpose of this is to show users how to pull in multiple files. In this case, I'll be pulling in four different Excel files. Um, and you know the, the purpose of this really is to show people how they can batch process things rather than going through and running rerunning the code uh, manually on each individual file why not pull all the files in and then just have the code um, run through each file and do the analyses that you want right so it's kind of a way to set up a batch process let's go ahead and clear out our workspace before we get started here okay the first thing that I'm going to do, and I put this in, in all my codes, is I just I add this up here. I know we just did it down in our command window, but um, I always put this near the top of all of my codes uh, just to make sure that every time I start, I'm starting with a, a completely cleaned workspace. Okay, so the way that we're going to actually get files is going to be interactive. So we're going to use UI get file, which is a built-in MATLAB function that will prompt a user to actually go through uh, a... Um, file tree and pick the files that they want to pull in. And uh, we're going to be looking specifically for .xlsx files or Excel spreadsheets. And it allows you to add, you know, a little flair to it. So we'll say grab the files you want to process. So this is just a, uh, a prompt that will show up in the file tree. Uh, and then the other thing that we need to do is turn multi-select on. So there's multi-select and we'll say on. Okay. And then uh, we need to make sure that the, the files that come in, we have file names, but we also need the path name. And UI get file will return both of those. So it will uh, return a list and the path to get to that list, which I'm going to call file list and path n or path name and then what we have to do is make sure that this is uh, in the right format so we'll say if is cell we'll pass in our file list it's equal to zero so if it's not a cell then uh, file list is equal to file list right we'll turn it into a cell if it isn't one already Okay, so this is basically it, right? So let's just run this really quickly and see what we get. I just want to show you the format of uh, a file list in path n. So here they are here. So here's file list, and you'll see it's just a list of the actual file names, or it's a cell, rather, of the actual file names. And then path n is a character array that specifies the path uh, to get to those file names. Okay, so once you've done that, it's pretty simple now. Now we're just going to set up a for loop that's going to run the length of that list, and it's going to go through, and on each iteration of the loop, it's going to pull in the next file on the list, right? So we'll say for i is equal to 1 through the length of file list. And now we need to actually load the data. So on each iteration, what we're going to do is we're going to update the file name. So file name will be equal to uh, file list. And then we need to pull out the first aspect of that list, or the not the first, the iteration aspect of the list. So if it's the first loop, then we want the first one. If it's the second loop, we want the second one. And so instead of passing one into this, we'll pass i. And then we'll specify the path name. Although the path name doesn't really change. Right, it's always going to be path n, so we don't actually need to update that, I don't believe. Let's try to do it without it. So we'll say data in is equal to xls read. Um, it does actually recommend using uh, read table now instead of xls read, so you might want to consider using uh, read table rather than xls read, especially if you're working in newer, uh, newer releases of MATLAB. But for right now, We'll just do XLS read. Um, it is still functional. So, and then what we're going to do is pass in the path n and our file name. Okay. So, let's see. 
Yep, all this looks good. So this should load in the data for the ith file. Um, let's do something here just so that we know that what's coming in is real. I've got one of these files pulled up here and I'm just kind of showing you what it looks like. We've got left heel strikes, left toe off. So let's go ahead and pull in our left heel data and we'll just uh, plot this. So this is going to be in, um, let's see, column one, two, three, four, five, and six. So six, seven, and eight is what we want. So we'll say, um, that's the left heel, I believe. Let's just say heel X will be equal to data in, um, we want all rows of, what did we say it was? Six through eight. One, two, three, four, five, six. So six, seven, and eight. We want all rows of six. And then uh, we also want, copy that. We'll get X, Y, and Z. So Y, Z, we'll get all three dimensions. And then this is seven and eight. So this is gonna take that heel data. And then let's just say, um, on each file, what we want to do is let's just plot our, let's do a figure and we'll plot, uh, let's see, we'll do heel uh, Y, and this will be our anterior, this is the anterior posterior direction in our lab. We'll plot it against heel Z, or the vertical direction, so we should get a nice little loop um, of the, basically the foot swinging and landing on the ground. So let's go ahead and do that. And at the end of this, what we'll do is we'll say UI, actually, let's not do UI wait. So what UI wait would do is it would hold up the script until I exited out of the figure. Let's just keep it open and then we'll know that this loop is going through four different files because it should produce four separate plots at the end. It might take a little while because these uh, Excel sheets are quite large. Uh, all right, so let's go ahead and run this, make sure everything works. So we're gonna select all of our files here like I said, it might take a, a minute um, because the Excel files are large. Now, one of the things that I do uh, is take all of my Excel files. A lot of things produce Excel or CSV files. Well, one of the codes that I use really frequently when I'm taking data and running loops through a bunch of different files iteratively is I take a bunch of CSV files and I convert them into MATLAB structures. And uh, then I save them as MATLAB workspace variables and they're very, very easy to load into MATLAB when they're in that structure. And they're very typically uh, a lot uh, lighter for the computer, so they, they take up a lot less space. Okay, so here's our plots. Um, you can see here that we ran all of these. So this is figure four, so this would have been produced on that fourth trial there. Let's just quickly compare that to uh, to figure three, which would have been plotted from the, the data from the third file. And you can see they are different. Take a look at the x-axis, um, different scales here. Um, so we do know that we're pulling in different data. This would be from file two. You can see here, different, different uh, scales. And then of course, the last one here is figure one. And you could see, I don't know if you noticed, but it was like 0.2 here and then 0.3 and then 0.5 and 0.6 at four. That's because uh, this data comes from different speeds. So trial one is 0 0.8 meters per second, and then trial two is 1.2, trial three is 1.6, and trial four is 2.0. And so what these figures tell me is uh, people are taking what look to be uh, longer steps as you speed up, which makes sense. And just to walk you through this data, this remembers anterior posterior are along the x-axis and vertical along the vertical axis um, or the y-axis. And so you can see here, this would be the support phase while the foot is on the ground and then it goes up into swing, comes back down, heel strike, foot goes back, swing, so on and so forth. So that's what that data is. Okay, so you could easily imagine pulling data in and instead of plotting like we just did, um, you know, you run, you run some kind of analysis. Um, analysis for file I, and you would run that analysis. And then let's say, you know, if you wanted to spit out some kind of output um, some kind of like result for each file you would uh, you know export result for file I 
and maybe you save it or maybe you um, maybe you assign it to a, a larger variable up here and maybe that variable is a MATLAB structure that has field names of each trial so that's a really uh, common thing to do as well you'll have one variable let's just say it's data and then you make subfields of trial one trial two trial three trial four and so on um, and you can do that automatically within MATLAB uh, which is really nice and then within each trial, then you have the results of whatever analysis you ran, right? Okay, so this is really simple, right? This is just pulling in multiple trials. This is going to allow you to batch process, so it's a really important tool to have uh, in the tool belt. Okay, if you like that video, uh, please give it a thumbs up. Please subscribe to my channel. And you can find me on Twitter. You can find a lot of my code up on GitHub. If you ever, if you ever have any questions, or suggestions about videos to make, please just reach out to me. Um, some of these more recent videos have been suggested, so I'm trying to keep up with um, some of the suggestions that I get. You can also find me on uh, LinkedIn and ResearchGate. I post, uh, all my academic work is up on ResearchGate as well. So check me out on all those platforms, and of course you can keep watching me here on YouTube. All right, until next time, keep coding.